What's up, what's up guys? Good morning, good morning. Y'all are doing, hope y'all are doing well today. Let me turn the music down. Hold on. I know fake Buddha. Listen, man. Here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you about that. I saw your comment, bro, and and I appreciate the constructive. You know, I I appreciate you being constructive. All right. Uh, but here's the thing, right? Let me turn this down a little bit. Okay, so, so we get a lot of people asking us for recaps. Okay, the best thing you could really do is just increase the speed of the stream video, right? If you want to watch the stream, just put it up to like two or three times. It'll fly by. Okay, that's number one. Number two is that if we did make recap videos, they hurt our algorithm. They hurt our YouTube algorithm. If we post recaps, number YouTube is going to penalize us if we post, if we if we do the stream and then we post the same content from the stream in another video on the same day. YouTube's going to penalize us. Uh, they're not going to like. They're going to just hurt our algorithm. We're going to get less views if we do that. And so with that. We want to do that. I would love to be able to post a recap video every day without the algorithm hurting our views. But it hurts our views. And so we tried that before. And we've done it before. And in the end, you know, we're just trying to grow as fast as we can. I know some people want to see recap videos. Like I said, my suggestion is to just put the video in fast forward. And uh, that way you'll get through it a little bit faster. You know, but I apologize about that. I really do. I would love to be able to post a recap video. But... It just hurts our views if we do, unfortunately. Hope that makes sense. No, I feel you. I get it. What's up, Jay? What's up, Bubba? What's up, Android? What's up, Jeremy? What's up, Dave? What's up, Sessie? Good morning. What's up, Stock? Nah, he's not hating. He's just asking. I'm not mad at comments like that. He ain't. He's not hating. As much as I battle the haters, he's not hating. He's just asking. You know, I get it. Honestly, I would love to be able to post a recap video. I would. What's up, Evil? Evil Eric? Good morning, man. What's up, dude? Yeah, I'm holding a few stocks right now, guys. Let's take a look at the stocks I'm holding right now. I am holding uh, DYNT. I'm holding DYNT. I'm about to break even, as you can see here. Uh, I am holding uh, just 100 shares. We're gonna we're gonna trade some penny stock momentum today as well. Like I said, guys, regardless of what you want to see, if you like penny stocks, we trade penny stocks. If you like mid and high cap stocks, we day trade mid and high cap stocks every single day. You like us trading large cap stocks, we trade large cap stocks too. I traded Disney a bunch of times yesterday, and so with that, you know, we trade it all here. We trade on Weeble, we trade on Thinkorswim, we trade on Tefts, we trade on Robinhood, we trade options, we trade stocks. We trade penny stocks. We trade it all here. Hit the subscribe button. Do it now. You know. <laughs> What's up, team? IPIX. Let's take a look. I can take a look. Hold on. Yeah, FAME was the crazy one yesterday. I lost money in penny stock land yesterday and in mid and high cap stocks. It's been a rough week. It's been a losing week. Thank you, Android. Yeah, I did that video for, like, one guy. One guy was like, hey, I want to see a video of this. And I was like, all right, I got you. And I made a video just for that one dude. I think his name was Kevin. For that one dude, I made that video yesterday. Um, but, I mean, I know other people want to see it, too. Because, like, that is how you get around the PDT rule. That is how you do it. You want to get around the PDT rule? Watch that video. You can only trade penny stocks, but that's what makes the most sense. But thank you, Android. I appreciate it. What else we got in penny stock land? Let's take a look at the gappers today. We got BYFC. Yeah, I feel you. Like I said, I'm not mad at you. I got you. You're good. Um, AMED. Yeah, I got you. Hold on. AMED. Uh, too small of liquidity. Too low of liquidity. I mean, the real one that's popping off is U-O-N-E with U-O-N-E-K. Um, we got S-H-L-L popping off here. I don't mind that one. I-M-R-N. 
gapping up here. We got CHCI here. We got LITB. We got uh, Auto. We have uh, SALM. We've got NTM here. And so we got uh, some movers today, really. We got LMFA, NIU, um, AMC. We got Genius Brands. AMC is popping off here. Look at AMC. I don't hate this one. Um, I'm not going to hold this one long term, though, but it doesn't look bad for AMC ripping up here. Uh, what else we got? AMS. Got some people talking about it. Genius Brands, G and US. What's up, Emmanuel? WKHS Workforce. Yeah, we can look at it. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not too bad. NBAX, ripping up, NBR. What's up, Kevin? Hey, there you are, Kevin. Hey, bro. Kevin, I made the video. Did you see the video? I made the video, Kevin. I made it for you, bro. I made you that video. It's only if you didn't if you didn't see the video, I made it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's NBR. We'll see what happens with this one. I'm looking at. I'm holding DYNT this morning. I'm down three bucks. I'm planning to hold it under this 106 level for the previous close. Nice, John. Yeah, I mean, I think the I think the thing with AMC Paul is you have to you have to take into consideration how much the short term like retail movement is going to increase the stock short term. I don't know what it's going to do long term, but I know movie theaters have been closed down, and so I would be shocked if AMC didn't move up as movie theaters started to reopen. Now, do I think AMC is going to go back to its former gro uh, glory? Absolutely not. But I think short term, it does make sense. Uh, we got CHK, so we got energy popping off here. What's up, Terry? What's up, brother? All right, let's start taking a look uh, at some of these movers here. I'm going to look up the news for BYFC. BYFC is popping off this morning. to show you guys this one this is BYFC um, let's take a look at why this one's moving haha <laughs> all right we got BYFC popping off here this is a financial services stock apparently I don't see why it's moving but uh, BYFC is popping off. Uh, I don't know what BYFC is. It's Broadway Financial. Okay, so uh, this is just a financial stock popping off this morning with some other financial stocks. Oh, we also have UONE, which is the underlying stock for some of the one of those penny movers as well with UONEK. Uh, UONE is Urban One, and they are just popping off and all of this nonsense going today. Um, yeah, I don't see why you are moving. There's so many halts for this one in the last three days. I can't even figure out what the stock is, man. What is UONE? Somebody help me. I'm holding DYNT. Like I said, I'm holding 100 shares. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be momentum trading some of these too. So if you find some that look good, let me know. We got SHLL here popping up. S SHLL. This is Hylion, and they had a tortoise acquisition that announced a merger. Combined company to remain listed on the New York Stock Exchange. All right, so Hylion, which is a uh, 
S H L L. All right, so High Leon and Tortoise Acquisition Corporation will remain on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol H Y L N. But yeah, this was an acquisition uh, catalyst. Uh, we also have IMRN, which is really popping off this morning too. This one's gapping up from 775 all the way to 1130. Uh, and this is Amuron, and they are up after they said that they executed they executed a research agreement with Australia's National Science Agency, CT, CSIRO, to produce a new therapeutic agent against Campylobacter and Enterotoxigenic Escherichia, Escherichia coli for clinical evaluation of the U.S. Department of Defense. Nailed it. Yes, sir. You know, I'm just nailing these uh, biotech stocks. Uh, under the terms of the search agreement, this is all quoting now. I'm just going to quote this. Uh, from This is from Dow Jones Newswires, and it says, quote, Under the terms of the research agreement, CSIRO will produce a hyperimmune bovine colostrum product using vaccine development by the Naval Medical Research Center. End quote. And that's for IMRN. So that's the news for IMRN. We'll see what happens here. Um, a lot of people talking about this one today uh, for IMRN. We also have CHCI. This one's gapping up a little bit as well here. This is Comstock. What's up, Bubba? What's up, dude? Sorry, bro. I didn't even see the chat, man. What's you owning? You Urban One Radio Broadcasting. Oh, gotcha. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm not touching the UONE, man. That's too scary. That's the new hypest. That's like the cool kid on the block right now, and I don't want to be cool. You know? That's all, that's all I'm saying. UONE is the cool kid on the block right now? I'm not trying to be cool, man. Because cool kids lose money. Um, you know? Uh, what's up, Jason? What's up, man? Uh, what else we got? LITB gapping up here. Now this one doesn't look bad. What was the other one I was looking at? The other one I was looking at, it was it was a what was it? AMPE. Now AMPE is interesting. I'm looking at AMPE and this one's a penny stock gapping up, but it is it is popping off here. And this is Amtex. Raised price target yesterday. Um I don't know what this is either. This is Amtec. Yeah, I don't know what the underlying asset for this company is. It's so hard to figure out. Let me see. What is Amtec? Somebody help me out, chat. Where you at? Help me out. Let me know. But I'm watching Amtec, A-M-T-E here. Alpha Pro Tech with the whole face mask shenanigans. Yeah, APT. Ah, can't type it. Ah, can't type it. There we go. Yeah, hey. This was a little scary, man. Uh, it, this one gets so influenced by the, the direction the market heads. I'm scared of that one, man. Yeah, U O N E is super scary. 100%, man. I'm scared of that thing, dude. That thing is like, I have nightmares about U O N E K. You know, not not U O N E because this one's okay. I mean, it's a huge percentage gain relative to the price, but U O N U O N E K is really the scary one because this is one that people can actually afford, and this thing goes absolutely ridiculously crazy, man. Uh, just crazy. It's crazy enough for me not to want to mess with it. I'm holding DYNT right now, and I'm about break even. Uh, if you guys want to see, I'm holding DYNT right now. 
so we'll see what happens with this one. It's just a dip buy opportunity. I'm about to break even, and I'm going to hold it down to this previous closing price right here, this light blue line. I got plenty of equity to day trade again today, guys, so we're going to try to trade some momentum. A little bit more than dip buys. This is the only dip buy I'm going to buy today, and then we're going to look to trade some momentum uh, throughout the day on Thinkorswim. Maybe scale up a little bit, save my equity for some bigger size scalps on momentum stocks. That's what I'm kind of looking at now. Uh, Tahir says, what's the play on uh, DYNT? So, so we just dipped down close enough to give me a really tight risk level relative to my entry price, right? So I'm planning to exit if we hit this previous close price right here at about $1.07, right? So that gives me an 18 cent risk, all right? So that's 18 cents of risk. And so if I can get, you know, 40 cents in reward, if I can get 30 cents, it's worth it, you know, 30, 35 cents, uh, 35 cents up, is at about 60 here so that's a very reasonable uh, gain right there you know uh, if I can get 150 or 160 it's a good risk reward trade uh, better than one to one for sure and it's a nice dip buy over a pretty solid support level at this previous closing price and so I can effectively let it battle this previous closing price see if I get a pop up to 150s or 160s to give me roughly a two to one reward to risk ratio and then ultimately take advantage of the good accuracy that I think is going to be here as well because I think it'll hold over 107 and if it doesn't it's a very small risk that's the play what's up futures 101 yeah you saw my video huh futures I know I know I'm the greatest trading channel ever. I get it. I just gotta live with that truth, you know. But uh, but no, seriously, um, I don't know. You gotta just reach out to TD. Yeah, you can you can say, hey, I don't want a margin account anymore. You know, I, I'm assuming you can. I mean, I can't, they can't force you to have margin. You can have a cash account anywhere if you want to. But yeah, that's how you get around the PDT rule. That's what I talked about in the video. Uh, because it's true. Like I said, how many times did I trade yesterday? I traded five times yesterday. I still got three day trades. I still got plenty of equity to day trade today. I probably traded like 20 something times this week. It, just trading penny stocks with a $4,500 account. My account's 4500 How do I trade more than three times per week? It's a cash account. It's a cash account. I have enough equity to manage my uh, equity trading penny stocks to be able to actively day trade as much as I want, really. Um, not as much as I want. That's That's not necessarily true but I can't actively day trade certainly not nah, Eminem I'm in TD Ameritrade brother I trade as much as I want not as much as I want but you know I'll put it this way yesterday I traded five times I'm in another trade right now and uh, the day before that I traded like three or four times I, in the last two days I've traded like 10 or 11 times on TD Ameritrade on thinkorswim and uh, I still have as I can still do it as much as I want, because like I said, it, I have a video talking about how you get around the PDT rule if you're specifically trading penny stocks. If you're trading penny stocks specifically, that is. If you're trading mid and high cap stocks, it ain't gonna work. You know, if you're trading penny stocks, it certainly works. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the overall market today, guys. No, I do not have 25k. Look, 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 look. I try to show you this. I don't want to show you the full. I don't want to show you my account number. Okay, but I'll show you. Let me see. Let me make this so you guys can actually see it. All right. Can you see that? No. Okay. Can you see that? There we go. Okay, that's how much money I have in my account right now. I have four thousand five hundred dollars in this account, right? I have uh, in 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 buying power for today. I have three thousand one hundred and sixty-two dollars, which is plenty of buying power, right? I'm I, I get to day trade, and I'm already trading today. I traded five times yesterday. You can see it still says I have three day trades left, because it's not a margin account. It's just a normal cash account, and I have enough equity to be able to trade penny stocks as much as I want, close to at least. Um, and so it's not a $25,000 account. I traded five times yesterday. I'm in a trade right now. That's going to be a day trade. I traded three times before that. I've been trading much more than just five times or three times per five rolling day period. Uh, and again, 
I put out a video yesterday on how you do that, why you do that. So if you haven't caught that video, uh, let me post it real quick. You can go check it out. Oh, let me exit out of that. No, you can't. I can't short in TD. I don't have same day settlement, but TD and Ameritrade feel uh, they settle me pretty quick. Yeah, guys, for everybody asking about this here, go go check out this video. In this video, I explain all the different nuances of day trading penny stocks with no PDT rule with a cash account uh, with less than twenty five thousand. Like you want to know how to day trade penny stocks with less than twenty five k? Watch this video. Yep, exactly, Christian. That is exactly what I do. But yeah, watch that video I just posted in the chat. That's how you get around the PDT rule if you're specifically trading penny stocks. If you're going to trade mid and high cap stocks, it ain't going to work. You're going to use too much of your equity per trade, and you're not going to be able to the, to uh, conserve your equity. But if you're trading mid and high cap, if you're trading penny stocks, I mean, it works. I can day trade. I can day trade 20, 25 times a week and be fine and never run out of room to trade. Uh, you're not going to get same day settlement, Chris. Uh, you're just not. I never have. I get next day settlement. Like they settle me the next day most of the time, but it's never same day. All right, LMFA popping off here. We're going to watch this one. But yeah, BYFC. Let's look at the overall market today, guys. Spy is popping off, pushing up towards the highs here. Um, All right, so yeah, here's the spy. We're gapping up from 310 all the way to 313.50s. So pretty nice gap up in the overall market. Yeah, just watch that video, guys. That explains it exactly how you do it. Like, like I said, if you've watched me trade this week, you know I've traded far more than three times. I've probably, this week, I could go look to see how many times I've traded this week. Uh, let me see. Uh... It's not showing me. Like I said, I'll put it this way. I've traded far more than three times per week. My guess so far this week, I've probably traded about 15, 20 times so far, not including today. And it's fine. I can day trade as much as I want, really. Not as much, but uh, there's, a, there's an element to it you just got to pay attention to, and uh, it's fine. Like I said, I can day trade as much. I, I, can, I can day trade not as much as I want, probably up to 25 times a week. Definitely more than three, though. All right, so let's look at the spies news here, team. Let me bring this up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read this, and this is from MT Newswires, and it says, quote, U.S. stock futures pointed to a positive session for Wall Street on Friday, lifted by expectations of a swift economic recovery despite the continuing threat of a second wave. Dow Jones Industrial Average futures rose 1%, S&P futures increased 0.9%. NASDAQ futures gained 0.8%, and traders are also eyeing developments surrounding the $1.5 trillion infrastructure plan unveiled by the House Democrats on Thursday. Oil prices nudged higher with global benchmark Brent crude up 1.9%, and U.S. West Texas Intermediate up 2.5% recently after members of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allied producers promised to improve compliance with agreed output curbs. There are no major economic data, do, data releases for today, and... Uh, Fed Reserve uh, Chair Jerome Powell was scheduled to speak at a video conference event with the Youngstown, Ohio area community at 1 p.m. Eastern. In equity, shares of Light in the Box (LITB) were 43% higher, uh, and we got a few other movers. As <clears throat> we got a few other movers as well. But that's the market news for today, guys. UONE still moving here, uh, still gapping up. Uh, crazy, crazy move here. We're gonna try to catch some momentum. Yeah, exactly, Chase. Uh, if you have a margin account, I think so, Chris. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, Robin Hood will do that, Dave. Do you do day trading? Yes. GSAT, Paul? Let me check it out.
Uh, too low a volume for me, but uh, brother, I just don't like this one. I'm looking at AMPE though. If this one can hold, uh, I don't hate it. Like I said, I'm holding DYNT, hoping we get some strength before the bell. And if I lose, I might lose like 18 bucks, which is fine. Um, but we're gonna use this 108 level as my risk. All right, let me start selling out. <laughs> yeah, it works. Uh, like I said, I can day trade basically as much as I want, man. Uh, not uh, obviously not as much as I want, but I could trade 20, 25 times a week, which I usually don't even need to. Uh, look, we got COHN ripping up, guys. Look at COHN popping off. A lot of volume coming in. Big moves. Gapping up from 770 all the way to 1614 here for COHN. Picking up some volume. Let me look up the catalyst behind this move specifically, and uh, we can figure out what's going on with COHN here. Uh, this is Cohen, and they amended a 13D filing from Chair President Daniel Cohen showed 74.61% stake. And so a 13D filing showed a 74.61% stake in COHN, and it is ripping up because of that. This thing is up uh, uh, pretty close to 100%. It looks like it's up about 90% right now, but a ridiculously huge move. Um, or it's up over 100% from where it closed yesterday. So over 100% move, I'll just call it that for CHON. Uh, we'll see what happens here. What's up, Webb? What's up, dude? What's up, Chris? What's up, Daniel? Yeah, look at COHN, though, guys. This one's popping off here. And this is one of these other ones that got halted so much in the last few days, it's hard. But yeah, COHN. That's yeah, okay. I'm just looking for it to battle a uh, dollar. It's got a large float, John, because it's a it's a cheap stock, brother. So uh, people are going to be buying more shares, and so thus the float's going to be a little bit bigger, uh, just because it's under a dollar. It's just a more expensive stock. It's a cheaper stock, so people are going to need to buy more shares, and thus the float's going to ultimately need to be larger. Um, but yeah, COHN is absolutely ripping up this morning, team. Huge, huge move. Volume looks low on CH, COHN. I mean, look, all I'm doing is looking at this. Like, look at the move right now. Maybe earlier, but look at the move in pre-market. That is a uh, pretty solid liquidity. It doesn't look bad. I'm not saying buy it or sell it. I'm just saying look at it. It's popping off. You know? Look at these green candles. It's had five green candles in a row, and this thing has been moving up dollars at a time. Dollars per candle. So, this thing's moving crazy. I don't know what the float is for CHON. Let me see. The float is 669,000, guys. A ridiculously small float a tiny float this one's like 670 K so very very small ridiculously small not even a million in the float for this one not close to half a million um, but yeah this one's popping off tiny float for CO CHO uh, CHO uh, CHN yo 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 what's up Royce All right, team, let's do this. Uh, in the past, pro traders took profits on Friday for the weekend. This is per an older CBOE beans trader article. Uh, any thoughts on Friday being a day of taking profits for the weekend? Um, it, to me, it doesn't matter. I'm just day trading. And so whether whether we take profits or not, it's it doesn't matter that much. Um, I'm just looking for quick momentum moves. I'm mostly a scalper. And, and 
And I know, like, listen, I know how the chat is. The chat is kind of moody, right? Like, you do good for a week, the chat hates you. You do great for the, or you do bad, or you do bad for the week, the chat hates you. You do good for the week, everybody's like, you're the greatest trader ever. Like, it's super manic depressive. But uh, the reality is, is that the last three weeks or so, I've been in a little bit of a slump. Um, it's okay. Like I said, my account's at about $8,500 in profit, about 8500 And uh, like I said, in the last three weeks, I think I've probably lost about $1.5,000. Um, which is okay because it's like you know you go up 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 you pull back a little bit you continue going up and that's fine um i just i, I think i have to uh, start to be a little bit more patient with my trading one of the biggest problems is that if you watch me trade at the open uh what i do is like i'll end up making like a few hundred bucks like i make a hundred two hundred dollars and the problem is is that i don't sit on it i end up keep pushing and just going back red on the day and that has happened the last three days is where i make money then I give it back and so I think I have once I make those few hundred dollars like I have been I think I just need to keep on to it and not force it anymore because I think my confidence has gotten to the point when I've had you know so many green weeks in the last year my confidence is to the point where I'm like yeah I'm just gonna keep trading because I can keep growing this up to 500 or a thousand dollars in profit and I just don't think that's viable especially in a choppy market and I think if I'm making any mistakes that's it um But yeah, at this point, we're looking at the SPY. We're going to see if we can momentum trade some penny stocks too. Uh, but yeah, COHN, like I said, tiny float. 669,000 in the float. And look at the move here. Oof. Look at this. COHN, guys. If it breaks this level, it might get a bigger rip. It's too expensive for me right now. But a uh, huge, huge move. Hey, I appreciate the sub, Neil. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right, remember, there's the break. Uh, we'll see if it continues here. Like I said, it's a little bit too cheap for me, or a little bit too expensive for me. All right, so again, here's the break. Like I said, the break of uh, 1875 is interesting for uh, COHN. Alright, see, there's the rip. Look, so after that uh, 1870s, we are at 2050. So this is the move I was talking about, and I'm able to pretty much predict these type of moves because they happen a ton. Very small flow spot, uh, spot, but remember, guys, this is the level I talked about. This is the level right here, 1880. Look at that. I told you guys, uh, volume coming in big. Uh, look at the volume. Let me let me make myself a little bit smaller here. Look at the volume. Man, look how small I am. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, look at the volume way up there, guys. Look at that. Um, look at the volume come in all around this level here. Look, look at this. Look at the volume come in, man. Look at that. And I, like, like I said, we got a rip, so. We'll see what happens. That's the next level to see if it holds support there, too. Yeah, my, my, I'm loud. My mic's also right next to the keyboard, but uh, I type loud. I got that programmer uh, keyboard typing. <laughs> BYFC, you think it's going to go higher? Uh, we'll see, man. I don't hate it. You know, we'll mess with it. 
Hey, I told you guys, yeah, the float is tiny, tiny. Greed is... Uh, greed is bad in some ways, right? You don't want to be too greedy. You want to... Like, like here's the thing, right? You need to be... You need to be... Uh, you need to avoid greed enough to not just hold on to losers or not hold on to winners too long. You have to... Greed is bad if it makes you hold on to uh, a stock too long, right? Which does happen. And so if you're going to try to trade, you need to try not to hold on to stocks that long. Like, that's the key, you know? All right, team. Yeah. Hey, I called out that one. I called it out. Yeah, United Airlines up, Uber's up, Disney's up. Um, people gave me so much grief for my callouts the other day on MGM, Uber, United Airlines, and Disney. I don't know why. Because, like, we opened up at 35. We're up way higher than that now. We're doing fine. Shout out to my man Trader Mike, I'm dropping our link. Yeah, I'm not touching it either. John, did you ever see the beautiful, beautiful, the movie Beautiful Mind? That's what my desk looks like. I put all my notes and legal sheets. Uh, yeah, yeah, my wife loves that movie, man. Uh, beautiful Mind. It's a sad movie. I don't like it. It's kind of depressing. I've seen it like ten times. It's kind of depressing though. Uh. We'll see. Like I said, if you're just not joining us, I'm holding DYNT. I'm down like 10 bucks on the day. I'm going to wait and, and get most of my trading in momentum at the bell. That's what I'm planning on doing. What else we got, guys? MDIA. Yeah, MDIA getting some volume ripping up here this morning in pre-market. Look at this. Uh, let's take a look at MDIA's catalyst if it has one, but this one's got to be a small float too. Let me see if it pops up on my scanners. Let me uh, let me get better. Let me fix these scanners a little bit. Uh, this is Medallico Holdings. Not seeing any catalyst yet for this one. Let me fix these scanners and get a little bit better ones real quick. That's not right. That's not right. There we go. That's better. That's what I wanted to do. All right. But yeah, MDIA ripping up here. Um, these are some of the more recent movers. But um, I'm trying to be safe with DYNT. It's just a dip buy with a tight risk reward is all it is. Like I said, I'm, sh I'm saving most of my equity to be able to uh, day trade momentum style at the bell. And so I'm trying to save my trade so I can take a little bit larger swings at the bell. That's all I really want to do. Uh, obviously, I'm going to trade my other stocks too. But like in penny stock land, I'm trying to save my equity so I can really attack them more so at the open. What do I think of IDEX? Uh, 
Uh, this one, I mean, it's breaking underneath the VWAP. That's the only thing I don't like about it. I think a, a big support level is going to be a 215 and then obviously 206. But it's breaking underneath the VWAP. I don't like it until it rips up and breaks this 250 level uh, is, is what I like the most about it. Like, if it can pull up and break that, that's fine. But if it can't and it continues to just hold underneath the VWAP, this is a big level here at 225 as well. Uh, those, are, those are the levels I would watch. So you can see uh, 215, 225, and 250. Are the levels uh, really really easy levels there but um, again 225 is a huge level and I think that's one of the most important close levels here is 225 uh, and then 250 obviously but 215 is a big level too so we'll see but that's what really what I'm watching um, I don't hate it I traded this one earlier the week earlier in the week like I said I'm holding DY and T with a few hundred shares but nothing crazy down 12 bucks as you can see small we'll have some fun with it uh, and that this is the point though this is 100 shares i'm, I'm spending 115 dollars in equity uh, in this trade so a very small amount of equity i can you know litb aese i don't hate litb let's look up the catalyst for it if it has one Right, let me go over the market news. This is light in the box. It posted a first quarter revenue and profit. Uh, just a review. Uh, so yeah, this is this is light in the box. Um, it reported first quarter net earnings of one cent per American depository share. A year ago, the company lost 21 per ADS in the prior year, so much better than last year. Revenue for the quarter was 51.5 million, which was up from the 50.9 million reported for the same period uh, a year ago. Uh, so better than expected results. Uh, for the second quarter, they expect revenue of 105 to 120 million. Shares jumped 54%. So yeah, they're up pretty big, uh, LITB. So yeah, good, good results that came out for this one. We'll see. Um, like I said before this happened, COHN. You know, look at these moves here. I tried to, I, I, I called this one out before, like right here, when it was down at 18. You know, I called this one out. I saw it starting to run. I saw it, I even drew this level, drew this level right here, 1890. Look how well this level holds. This is a good lesson on support and resistance. Uh, look how well this level ended up holding. I drew this before this right here. And you can see previous resistance turns into support. Previous high of the days turn into support a lot. Um, so now the next thing to see if it breaks 22 right here, but it's a tiny float for this one. Very, very small float. I am long daily. Sorry, I'm long. Um, yeah, I can only I, I can only go long in, in, in TD Ameritrade. I can't short. Yeah, I saw that. Nah, it, it's long. I, I'll probably lose, but I mean, I'm down less than $15. I'll be all right. Yeah, I saw that about the Robin Hood guy. Hey, Kira, will you bring me my lucky LSU hat? Will you find my lucky LSU hat? It's my LSU hat. It's somewhere around there. 
I gotta wear my lucky LSU hat, you know. What's up, Kyle? What's up, Sean? I don't know yet, Sean. I'm, I'm mostly just trying to play off momentum, brother. I got my lucky LSU hat team. This LSU hat helps me win. I'm not superstitious at all, but I'm certainly only winning because I'm wearing my LSU hat, 100%. Yeah, there you go, Jay. You know, you know. 100% man, I gotta get my lucky LSU hat, you know. I'm not superstitious at all, but the only reason I win is because LSU hat, you know, that's it. Uh, <laughs> uh. Nah, I'm joking around saying it's my lucky LSU hat. My hair is just getting too long because I'm stuck home during lockdowns and I can't go get a freaking haircut. And so I gotta throw this hat on so it's just so it doesn't look all crazy, you know. I'm gonna get my wife to cut my hair again today. <laughs> all right, we got BYFC popping off here. Uh, Spy itself, like I said, here's the market. Uh, I could go ahead and go over some more market news, but yeah, this is the stock market right now. We'll see what we'll see why this is going. AMPE breaking new highs. Hey, I try to tell people, man. I try to tell people. I tried to tell people this is the one that looked the most interesting. I just didn't catch it. I just did I missed it. Hey, 100%. Wait, did my kids just leave without telling me bye? And that hurts. That hurts. They did, man. They didn't even let me talk bye, huh? No, well. That hurts, man, it hurts. All right, but yeah, we're watching AMPE here. Guys, we got Mitchie Rich in here. Let me fix that, the volume real quick. I mean, let me know how the volume is, guys. What's up, Mitch? You there, bro? Sorry, just talking to myself. No, oh, you're good. I, I barely can hear you. Hold on. Hey, what's up, yo, Clayton? Yo. There what's you go. Going on? You're good. You should be good. Uh, chat, let, let us know what the volume's like. You should be good. I got you up, too. Uh, I'll give a shout-out to Lester right there. I see that dark side of the moon. Hey, yes, sir. Pink Floyd? Yeah, man. Nothing like him. Yeah. We, uh, we used to have a Pink Floyd poster right here in my dining room, but now I guess my wife thinks we're too grown for that. I don't think you can ever be too grown for Pink Floyd, but oh, oh, we took it down. On. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Right, hey, I'm with I, you, bro. I know. I love Pink Floyd, but do, do I see a dolphin emblem by Carlos Ramos? <laughs> Dolphins are doo-doo. <clears throat> hey, 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 uh, uh, undefeated right there, Carlos. <laughs> uh. What's going on, guys? Good morning, good morning. This is bringing some excitement. I want to say hi to some of the people in the chat. How we doing? Felix, Royce, Jeremy, Sean, Tiny. What's going on, Jason, Edward? Of course, my man Carlos with the Dolphins. We got Jay Wild in the house. Sean, 
Lester. What's going on, guys? If you guys are new to the chat, definitely say hello. Always like to see new people in the chat. And how are we doing today? Let's do it. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, market's up today, man. We're looking, we're looking yeah, kind of strong. I can tell you right now, um, the end of the month, uh, contracts and stuff like that. Uh, people talk about something called the quad witch. Um, a lot of things are going to be uh, kind of uh, rotating. And from what I hear, um, there's a lot of pressure to the upside today, uh, meaning that there is a lot of uh, pre orders out there right now um, to the upside. Um, so buy volume uh, looking high. Um, now, one thing I will mention, and I've mentioned this plenty of times, whenever I've seen the pre-market or aftermarket going in one direction, we've always gotten kind of that opposite direction uh, towards the close uh, or towards the open. Um, so uh, I'll definitely keep an eye on this buy, but for right now, everything mentioned is more on the positive side. If you look at your watch list, I'm pretty sure you're gonna see um, probably about 80% of it in the green. Um, I have like a, like a 15 or 16 uh, stock watch list that I watch every day. And I can tell you right now on there, there's only two stocks that are red. Um, so uh, that just gives you kind of the sentiment of how we're looking on the day, how we're looking on uh, what we're gonna get. Um, penny stocks, guys, penny stocks moving, DVAX. DVAX on the move a little bit here, guys. This one started breaking out yesterday through the six. Now it's up there. It made a run pre-market to 685s, 88s, and pulled back to 640s. Now it's been holding 640s. Watch this one today. Um, it does have a COVID news uh, catalyst. Um, I've talked about this one in my penny stock video. Um, this was kind of a high, high risk, but a high reward play. Um, there's not many times that I'll get into the, kind of these plays, um, but it really all depends on the catalyst. Um, a lot of the times I want to go into a stock that I can more believe into the company and the product, um, like let's say WKHS or here, um, but D DVAX, COVID play, and it's, on, it's definitely on play today and tradable in TradeNet, just for you TradeNet tra uh, traders out there. All right, another one on the watch today. Of course, everyone's watching the crazy uni. I'm, I don't know if you covered this one already, John, but uh, this one's insane, man. Um, yeah. Some people were thinking about swing trading this yesterday, and I was like, well, if you want to swing trade this one, you better get me the bottle because I'm staying up all night with you. Yeah, 100%, <laughs> man. That's what I said. Like, I, that's what I, I joked about it earlier and said, I have nightmares about you, Oni, you know? Because uh, yeah. there's just so much risk, so much risk. It's up so much. It's so crazy. The range is so huge. You can make money. You could also lose a ton. Yeah, I said you better buy me the bottle, and I'll stay up with you because right. I ain't going to sleep if I buy that. Right. You might as well play blackjack. You know. Uh, yeah, all it. night long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's scary, man. It's scary. It, it's just a huge range. I'm not saying you you can't make money with it. I'm just saying it's it's up so much now that yeah. I'm scared of it. I, I like my sleep. <laughs> yeah, 100%. People ask me why I don't trade foreign exchange or futures, and I always tell them because I would never sleep, ever. You know? Yeah, I, I already see the European open half the time here in, uh, in Denver, and it's already like, whoa, whoa what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> the only market that I think I would ever get into, guys, and that's just because it opens up in the afternoon time, would probably maybe be the China market. That one has such manipulation I've heard about that I've never really tried to get into it. I would consider the London, like the London Open, or like maybe like the Australian. That one's not terrible, but I, I, I think what people got to realize is we're going to have far more liquidity on, on, in the U.S. in our stocks. Yeah, you just got to find the different patterns. Like we always say, there's always, there's always ways to make money in trading. You just have to find what works. So that, that comes with time. And it's something that we try to do here and break down the time for you guys. Um, we tell you guys strategies. We tell you guys risk management. We tell you guys um, how to find the hot stocks. Uh, all these kinds of tips, what they really are about is breaking down the learning curve. Um, at the end of the day, um, I think that's something that we do uh, really well for the, especially the beginner trader that needs to learn all about the ins and outs, the, the dark truths, the real truths of trading. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and touch up. Uh, did you touch Cone yet? I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I talked about that one. 
Yeah, I uh, talked about that one at 18. Uh, ripping up breaking highs. Yeah, that thing's a monster. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, people, some people are going to be trading AMC today, guys. Uh, there was some news that they're going to be opening their uh, movie theaters. And some people are bullish on this. You guys know how I feel about this stock. Um, uh, there's only uh, two stocks I've ever put out a zero uh, call out. And uh, th this would be one of them, AMC and Macy's. Um, those are the two that I've ever uh, said that I think will go to zero. Um, you guys could hold me to that. Um, there's, there's not many stocks that I'll have ever put out that I think are going bankrupt. Not only are they going down, but I think in the long run, uh, bankruptcy is in question. Um, one thing to watch, AMC, um, you can always watch CNK, which is Cinemark Holdings, and it's actually up on the day. This is the stock that trades very similar because what? It's a movie theater. It's very similar in the in the industry. So you guys, I'll, I'll call this one out so that you guys, if let's say if you don't catch a wave in AMC, you can look for a wave in CNK. Uh, OPGN, guys, another penny stock on the move today. Um, has a big amount of volume that was inserted to it on Tuesday uh, that was uh, June 6th um, so uh, just watch that guys um, this is one that hasn't really rocketed off but when I've seen OPGN actually make a move it's been big um, this is actually one of the stocks my first stocks that I ever traded um, and so uh, I'll keep an eye on this one this is OPGN huge kind of flag looking pattern on the daily huge support underneath it um, there's a lot of volume we got in it a little while back. It popped it to 225, um, and that's kind of what I'm watching. That that volume spike is, is what I watch for. Um, another one, penny stock that was really big on the move. Uh, was it MBEV or what's it? Was it? Um, hold on, let me pull it up. I know there's IDEX. I know people are watching that one. Uh, look at this one, John. Uh, this one's up there to two two dollars, and look at the amount of volume that's in this one. Oh yeah, that uh, one looks good. I was watching that one too. Yeah, this, this is definitely have investors' interest when you see 15 million shares uh, just traded easily on the hourly chart. Um, when this stock uh, has, when it's quiet, it only trades about two million shares. When it's hyped, it's up there to 15 million. Look to see if we get that kind of liquidity today. Yep. JBL, I'm seeing someone wants me to cover. Um, I'll take a look at it. Um, I can see from the weekly chart that it has a nice range. Um, why? Because it's g gone up and down from a resistance to a support. Uh, right here, I would say the 3505s and probably about $30. It's gone up and down in that area. So look for it to break either above or below, and then you get, get trend. Um, whenever a stock is trapped for three weeks within a range, I, I don't really necessarily want to trade it inside that range. I want to wait till it breaks outside of that range, and then I can get a trend to at least go with. All right, guys, another stock, uh, LIVX, L-I-V-X. Um, this is a uh, live X media um, good chart I can tell you right now that that, that amount of volume coming in uh, looks interesting um, this is definitely a slower slower move but you have a huge resistance right underneath it at 370s I think if you look for a dip closer towards that area that's where I would want to get in because you can get in off the prior resistance not the resistance right now which is up at 420s um, but it's a, it's a good stock with a good amount of volume starting to get in there. Um, so I don't think you're crazy definitely jumping on this one. This is one I didn't know about. So good stock in the chat. Um, what else you guys got in the chat? I'll help you guys out. We'll run through some. Uber. Uber rumors of buying Postmates. I haven't heard of that. Um, but hey, if they, bought, if they wanted to buy a Grubhub, um, who knows? They, they might go for Postmates. Yeah. Um, that does that doesn't seem unreasonable um so good good uh, call out there daily um so what i'd watch on uber is it it looks kind of like work does uh, i'm going to show you guys a very similar chart um, 
So work and Uber kind of look kind of the same. Whenever you get that kind of expansion out, investors selling up on the rip, then pulling back, buying up on the support and pushing out. Now the continuation is something you're gonna have to look for. What are they gonna be able to get? It could be that catalyst right there on buying Postmates that pushes them through this 35 level. That's the important level I think here for the Uber chart. Um, but where, where it got probably bought up was probably somewhere near that $32 price point. Um, at least that's where I would see long investors uh, getting in here when it triple bottomed. It bottomed here one day, bottomed here another day. On that third day, I would think they would start buying it up as it ripped through 32 because they can do a dollar risk right off that 31 and look for a potential for it to go to at least 35, but a potential of it going to 40. Yeah, uh, see that's- Risk and reward. Yeah, this is one that I, uh, I talked about in my top four stocks to buy. I posted last weekend. Um, this was one of them, and I, I called this one out uh, right around here, uh, right around 31 maybe, uh, because even like people were all down on this one because it missed out on the acquisition. Um, right, but the reality is is that when acquisitions happen it also gives them kind of a transitionary period that it takes a little while to get them in order and so short term Uber made sense and like I said I called this one out when it was way down here and so uh, I really every stock I called out in that video is up since then people were getting weird about the video but since then every single stock Uber uh, MGM Disney uh, United Airlines they're all up pretty big from where I called out so uh, Uber was definitely one of them happy that one's working for me here uh definitely um you know and with with a catalyst that, that's what i always talk about sometimes um you can use technical charts to help you look into a stock look into the story see what could possibly come from it and then what i always try to do is i try to mix my stories with what the technicals are telling me also um, I need to buy on pullbacks. That's a, I've always learned that. It's the pullback buy method, guys. Um, I don't really like to jump into uh, almost any stock at the high. I'm looking for investors to get washed out like it did here on this Uber candle. Um, this uh, candle on Thursday, this is what I call a washout candle. This washes out a lot of what, what you call the retail traders. And then institutionals have a little bit more room to hold a lot of the times than kind of these retail traders. Um, retail traders sometimes even hold to as tight of a risk as 10 cents. And so a lot of them just get washed out in, in those days. In a day like this, where it went down to 27.82, came right back above. And now you're like, what, what, what happened there? I got stopped out at $30, but it's back up to 34. Those are washout candles, and it happens, guys. Um, you can't really be upset about it. Just understand it. Start looking for these pullback buys. Don't catch yourself buying up at resistance. That's what I would say. All right, guys. So, hey, I'm going to give uh, my man Trader Mike a shout-out. Uh, probably the most active penny stock Discord I've ever been in. Uh, he's been super supportive of our channel here, too, and it's really one of the reasons that I decided to... Uh, start trading penny stocks again uh, we got about three minutes before the bell i wanted to post this before then so y'all go check out my man trader mike's discord like i said really active discord um dealing with penny stocks and uh like really talented traders in there for sure and so y'all go check out my man trader mike i'll post this link really quick here and uh yeah guys we got two minutes before the bell so let's do this let me know what you're planning on trading today it should be a fun day uh, let me get this link but yeah let us know what you're planning on trading today team all right, guys, another thing that I'll give you guys, uh, MGM, uh, someone mentioning in, this, in the chat. Also, watch Penn today, guys. Um, I've heard that Penn is going to be releasing uh, their app pretty soon, uh, their betting app. So keep that one on watch. All right, guys, so uh, we got two minutes before the bell, a little bit less than two minutes. As you can see, the spy itself is ripping up this morning right before the uh, right before the open here. You can see the SPY is at 214.20 here. So 214.20, a huge rip for the SPY itself. I am holding DYNT. Hopefully we get a surge at the open. I'm only holding 100 shares of uh, DYNT, but again, the SPY is ripping up here today. Uh, another big mover is CH, uh, COHN. This one's taken off, guys, and I called this one out at 18. Um, and I saw the volume start to surge in, so I think the big level here right now is this 1890 level, this $19 basically point. Uh, I think that is a huge, interesting level. We got one minute to the bell, guys, so let's do this team. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm holding DYNT, uh, watching a lot of other stuff. The SPY itself is breaking highs right before the open, and uh, should be a fun day. AMD ripping up with it. 
uh, we got a lot of other cool stuff, so let's do this team. Um, All right, team. Um, I can tell you right now with that push, look for the push for what I call the dash for trash. Uh, the dash for trash is going to be those stocks, those cheap stocks, industrials, um, the carnival, the airlines. I have a feeling that if you're going to get this big rip today, if you're going to get the rip, you might see what's called the cyclical trade where they pull their money from technology profits into, um, let's say, industrials, consumer cyclicals. Um, so right now, those are in the red. I'm going to look for those to go green. All right, guys, here's the bell. Good luck, team. Let's do this. Um, like I said, we're holding DYNT uh, only down 8 bucks. We're going to look for some red to green moves at the open. Let me get the scanners up, the uh, high the day momentum scanners. There's the bell, guys. Let's do this. Good luck. All right, guys. There we go. That should be good. Uh, fix this a little bit more. All right, guys. See, I'm holding this. We're trying to get a push up. Let me take off the five minute chart. getting MOBL popping off at the open. MOBL, guys. We're also getting VHC. We're getting PT. Like I said, if you guys see any red to green moves specifically, if you see stocks that move down and then back up... What, I just want to interrupt there, John. Sorry. Uh, wouldn't you know it? Uh, industrials start leading us. Okay, right now I'm looking at IDEX to see if we can catch this one on the way up too. Try to put both of these up so I can trade IDEX too if I need to, because that's what I'm really watching. It's starting to head up. I want to get my active trader out in time here. Come on. Put some of these up. All right, we're getting a drop. I gotta get ready to exit if I need to here. Watching, uh, like I said, IDEX is one. DYNT is the other one. I'm holding DYNT. I'll update you guys on that one. I'm looking at IDEX to see if we get a rip. If you see any penny stocks uh, pushing up this morning, let me know. All right, guys, uh, CCL uh, bottoming out here. I might just grab some for the red to green move. I want it below 19. I think the big move here for this morning, guys, was BYFC. It's halted on the way up. It's at 475 was halted. BYFC halted on the way up. Just bottomed out there for CCL. Um, now I'm trying to get down to the closest to the bottom. I don't want to get caught here in the middle. Um, that's really where I think it's always the worst to be in. Um, Gan jumping up there. You guys can keep an eye on that one. Also, uh, three three hundred thousand shares getting put into IMGN. Um, this is a penny stock I mentioned last week. Keep an eye on it. Yeah, BYFC is halted. Alright, looking for CCL to crack here in 19s, and then I'm going to try to scoop by a, kind of a red to green move here. Uh, 
All right, guys, just got in there at 92s. We're gonna risk off the 80, 80 mark. Ah, man, LMFA was the move to take here. If we drip, if we dip down to two dollars, I'll take a little bit. Um, getting ready to exit my DYNT trade. I'll try to throw Mitch up while we're waiting here, but I am looking at a LMFA. Alright guys, dip buying here. I'm looking for this to at least come back up to 1915. At that point, I'll take some profit and look for it to rip up. Probably gonna have to get out of DYNT here. Yeah, I'm gonna get out. All right, I lost 20 bucks on DYNT, very small. Still haven't traded anything else aside from that. Testing down. My risk is set at 79. Looking around, everything flipped red. Um, it's not uncommon when you got uh, the pre market to go in one direction. Now that there was that buy volume, that's what I'm looking to see if we're going to get these red to green moves. LMFA ripping up here. That was the one I wanted to take, unfortunately. All right, this is when I want to see the volume just come back into CCL and then rip it up. If not, it'll probably just stop me out at the 80, and then we'll just take that small hit. Yeah, AEMD is ripping up too. Yeah, I think I just missed out on some of these moves. I'm going to wait for some high of the day breaks now. There you go. Just got tested. Stopped out there. Um, it could come back from that 80 mark, but I'm going to stop out there for a small loss there. And just hang in here and look for another win. I think LMFA is getting halted at this high. It's either halted or really struggling to break. Mm. AMC already missed a fade on that one. Wasn't a bad look there at 615. Hope someone nailed that one. Ooh, PT. All right, I'm in 300 shares of LMFA. Try to get enough to take profits real quick. And KLA breaking down there, guys. Took half off, holding 150 shares of LMFA. Trying to get a high of the day break up here. Over this 230 level. I'll sell the rest into the breakout above that if we can. Building. Holding 150 shares left. Gonna try to sell into uh, the strength here if we get a break. Be impatient with it. We could get a rip down though, so I gotta be ready to exit if we do. I turn it down there. here but it already pushed up to 40s yeah here's the squeeze down i was talking about we might get it's all right we're about break even right now Down wick gives it some strength. Look, patiently waiting. I'm gonna get my taps account up so I can kind of see another level two to be sure it's working right. I'm 
All right, watching the CCL again, guys. PT pulling back a little bit. All right, guys, just took a little bit more CCL, gonna hold off the 70 low. You owe any going crazy? Yeah, for sure. There's 16s. There we go. All right, let's get the break. There's some strength coming in. All right, that looks good there. Looking to add anywhere close to 80 here. Just added to this position here. Not easy to hold 70s, guys. Look, looking for that red to green move. If I get stopped out here, then we gotta hold it tight to that 1870. Five foot right back down. Not a good sign. I can stop that right here. Ooh, big squeeze down. Careful here, guys. I just got out there. Too big of a squeeze. Lost uh, twelve dollars in that trade, so pretty uh, negligible. Um, like I said, if we see any other big moves, let me know. I was waiting for IDX, but didn't catch that one. Uh, we also have PT that is pulling back to the VWAP just to show you guys PT. Guys, uh, sold a little bit there just to limit the risk. It was a little bit. Oh, I didn't even get it out here. Hold on. Let's see if I can get it out here. Ah, it already dropped past my level there. I was trying to sell some there at 74s. Um, wasn't able to get some out. Had an order out. That's my fault. Um, would have been able to limit this risk here. Come on, PT, fill me. It's a market order. You're not gonna fill me? What? Are you serious? Think this way. No, 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 no. Are you serious right now? I think this one's not canceling my order. Give me out. Oh my gosh, are you serious, Thinkorswim? It just filled me with 700 shares. A thousand shares? What? Are you serious, man? Well, I'm in a thousand shares of, of, uh, of PT here. Just, just manage it, man. That's all you gotta do. Just manage it. Manage the risk, man. We got this. Did anybody see that? Like, I'm sitting there like, I didn't want that many orders. I click it, nothing happens. I click it, frozen. I click it, frozen. Up, oh, we're just going to fill you a thousand shares. Because our platform screwed up, man. Watch me lose like a few hundred bucks on this trade. Watch. 
If I do, I'm calling Think or Swim. Oh, well, there's 50. Absolutely ridiculous, man. Yeah. Not only did it fill me so much, but this is going to use all my equity. So I'm not going to be able to trade after this in penny stocks. Absolutely ridiculous, man. Yeah, we'll just have to uh, probably use Weeble now. Yeah. All right, guys, about to get stopped out here in CCL. Big loss there. Market tanking down on us. Still hasn't found the bottom. I had to get out there. I lost big there. Not having a good day trying to trade this CCL. I need to get out of her. But it was one of these days where the the buy volume was actually to the top, but we're getting it again, again. We got it. Pre-market strong, up, open, weak. I'm probably gonna take my money out of Think or Swim, man. I'm gonna put it into E Trader somewhere because uh, that wasn't cool. Yeah, that isn't cool at all. I, I could get out, but um, all my equity's done, man. I'm not gonna be able to trade it all today after this. Uh... Hey, manager, get into a position that you're comfortable with. That's all I would say. Vax guys, Dvax doing the red to green move today. I'm keeping an eye on this one. This is that COVID play. It went from uh, 40s, 38s, back up there to 660s. MPH looks like a good red to green move attempt. I'm going to try to get it here at 14, 4690s or 4680s. We'll see if we can get a pull back here. Yeah, honestly, I just need to document what time this was. So this was in, this was at the open today. I'm going to have to write all this down just because I'm going to approach him and I'm going to say, hey, if this is a losing trade, I'm going to approach him and say, hey, look, if you don't refund my money for this, uh, I'm, I'm taking all my money out and uh, I'm going somewhere else because like that was ridiculous. You guys saw it. It was live. Luckily, I have this live documented, but um, absolutely ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. And like this is my risk level here, but looks like I'm about to get stopped out. Watch it not fill me here either. But just absolutely ridiculous, just terrible platform. Terrible platform, honestly. Uh, it's, it's part of the free, man. Well, if you cancel your order, it's like I canceled my order. Well, I, it's like I clicked it, nothing happened, right? So I cancel my order, I add it again, nothing happens, right? Then it, it immediately fills all four orders that I already canceled at that point. Yeah. All right, guys, stock starting to lift, guys. Start stock starting to lift. I'm out, but I need to document this because this is absolutely ridiculous. Alright guys, stock starting to lift now. Trying to get into CCL guys, but that thing just rocketed back up. I'm gonna watch Pen. I, I do like that one. Yeah, I'm starting a ticket. IMGN guys also ripping up there, up there to 1460s on the day. Uh, DVAX up there 6071. GAN uh, pushing up there too.
No, but yeah, that sucks. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of the free platforms go to kind of more of a, a crappy side. Uh, you know, we don't have to really touch on which brokers, but it's part stuff that I've been seeing. Yeah. You think I should put this to the trade desk or the general support? Yeah, did anybody see that though? Like, did anybody see that? Like, I literally put all the orders in and uh, and it didn't fill any of them, right? So I canceled them. Obviously, I'm not gonna uh, I cancel them. I click the button, nothing happens. Click the button, nothing happens. Try to cancel it, doesn't cancel. Fills me a thousand shares all at once. And then, you know, I lose 17 cents a share, lose 170 bucks. Ugh, aggravating for sure. Yeah, 100%. I got it. I got it all on video. Luckily, I'm streaming this, and uh, it's all on video. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm putting the request in now. That's, that's just unfortunate and frustrating. It's not even the 170 bucks. The 170 dollars doesn't matter. The fact that it used all my buying power though. Two. That's what I'm frustrated with. Guys, Gan ripping, ripping. I'm gonna try to get in DKNG right here. Got a little bit. All right, guys. Looks like I got into a good position here. DKNG. Trying to catch this VWAP bounce play here. Where's my entry? Whoops. Okay. Looking to see if this can just go through the moon. Uh, saw Gan take off, so tried to jump in a stock that was in a good position in the same industry. A pen also in the same area. A five minute, 15 minute pullback off the VWAP. Yeah, I'm jumping in uh, MU or AMD uh, on this pullback. See if we get a rip back up. There we go, looking good for me. Uh, I got out. I got scared out right before the squeeze up. I only lost 15 bucks though. But uh, we're gonna see if we can catch this breakout now. All right, there's the squeeze. 15 bucks, John. Buy me a pizza. Yeah, man. I'm about to uh, go bankrupt. <laughs> I lost 15 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Buy me a pizza, dude. D backs. Uh, watch for long-term VWAP bounce play in that one. AMC, I think, was uh, a great play for me that I kind of missed. I'll uh, keep an eye on that one. All right, going to give this a shot to just get buyers here and shoot up. Looking good, guys. Big flip there. And the spy also. We're getting these games today, I think, with the spy. I need to slow it down. Right. It's one of these days where uh, I'm starting to see that there's a, there's a quite amount of traps here right out the open. So I'm okay to push a little bit today because overall, the week, I'm up close to 500. So I'm trying to push a little bit. Right, I'm making a little bit on AMD right now. Uh, I'm trying to talk. All right, guys, order to cover some here at 4135s for DKNG.
32s. All right, guys, just sold a good amount, sold the 300 shares there. Uh, it started slowing down there in the 30s, and I don't want to not get that profit since I'm a little bit down on the day. I want to make sure I at least start bouncing back some. Uh, but DKNG looking really good position here. We'll let the rest of that 100 work up, try to get it to the breakout. If it pulls back, I might add to this position. now there you go 42s right, so I'm trying to explain I'm oh, sorry but yeah I was just trying to explain this is what I told the guy on TD Ameritrade I said I was trying to buy 300 shares of PT I put the limit order in and did not get filled so I canceled the limit order and put another one in trying to enter on the asking price no fill again when well, I got to get out of my uh Big drop in the AMD. I probably should have taken profits. I'm kind of busy. That's all right. Uh, I said no fill again, so I canceled the order again, and the same thing kept happening. Then, after all the orders were canceled, it randomly filled all of them at once, causing me to enter much larger than I wanted, thus losing $170. I think that's a pretty good statement on what happened. Like I said, if they, listen, if they don't refund me, like, whatever, I'm just going to switch it out and, uh, I'm just gonna switch it out and uh, figure out what we're gonna do and probably switch platforms maybe. Spy ripping down here, starting to break loose. I'm gonna jump in uh, AMD with three or no 400 shares. Um, we'll see what happens here. Uh, small position. It sucks because I love the Thinkorswim platform too. It's my favorite platform. Thirty-eight. Yeah, when they went when they went free, like free commissions, I think that's when it started dropping off. Yeah, for sure. It sucks. It yeah. was really good. Uh, we're getting a breakdown here. I'm just going to get out for a small loss here. Uh, figure out what else we got. But yeah, it's unfortunate. It is what it is. Um, AESE, guys, up there to 280s now. One's interesting. Pen dropping down here, guys. So I'm not going to jump in here. DKNG. That's a big down move in the spy. Yeah, I'm seeing big stocks crack here. My short AMD here. Touched 4090 um, for DKNG. 
I didn't take it, guys. Um, just because of the spy doing this move that it's doing. But it did look interesting there. Um, the spy keeps testing those lows, though. Oh my gosh, man. So this guy's saying, I looked at all three buy orders and there was no delay. They filled right away and the fill notification was immediate as well. Oh no, that didn't happen. Okay. Yeah, like every broker. <laughs> it's cool. Like I said, I'll get out, man. I'll leave. Uh, I'll go to E Trade. I've, I've always wanted to use E Trade anyway. Alright. I am seeing some kind of buying in DKNG, but I don't want to jump in here just yet, guys. Uh, the spy still in kind of a worry zone. I want to see it scoop. Um, sometimes I would buy here if I saw the spy being strong, but the spy is weak for me. So, and I look at the industrials, and it was strong, and now it's in the middle of the pack. It's actually zero percent change from the open. Gan jumping up there. That's why it's looking interesting. Gan is ripping, guys. Gan is up there to 2650. Try to go, let it go to the 80s here. Jumped right back up. said so even though I have video proof of this going on the order filling late you're saying that even though it did not fill me right away and I have video proof of it you're saying it didn't happen question mark uh, I'm just giving you this interaction team Yeah, it's a he said, she said situation, unless we have it on a live stream. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what I'm trying to get the guy to really understand here, is that you could pretend it didn't happen, but I got 400 people that saw it happen. And, you know, like I said, this is just, you know, it is what it is. They want to deny it. That's cool. I don't think they realize that I'm actually live in front of 400 people right now where it's documented happening. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. KNG back up there to 4099s guys. I'm gonna let it test that bottom one more time. Pen coming back, that's what's getting me interested. Spy coming back, that's getting me interested. Yeah, it's already getting a big amount of volume there. 110 on the ask, 40 41 tens. Dip here in the 90s, I'll take some.
He said, send the video, more than happy to look at it, but there was no lag at all on the orders. What does that mean? Everyone knows Dinka Swim lags, bro. Yeah. I can just tell him that right now. I'm gonna say, I mean, no offense, but Thinkorswim is notorious for lagging. Yeah, it's not the first time we hear of Thinkorswim lagging. Man, this stock is a little trappy. I really want it, but I don't want to get caught at the top or the or in the middle. Gan ripping, guys. I, I know you guys probably saw the video this week um, putting out Gan. And you guys heard me talking about Gan all last week. Um, that's really a major reason I was looking for it to hold those daily supports and start ripping to the resistance. It's actually ripped past the daily resistance now. All right, guys, it's got another attempt for Penn to break down here. Um, DK and G might lead right here and push us back up. Um, if that happens, I'll go back to Penn and look for a play on Penn. Um, but uh, I, I want to get, if I do get DK and G, it's off the support. It's not off the resistance. All right, guys, DVAX, guys, penny stock of the day, I think. Uh, this is up there now to 688, guys. Look at this red to green move. Beautiful red to green move. Beautiful breakout through the trend line here. And now up there to the 16, 690s. This one was in our penny stock video where I said, watch out for a drop towards the 550 area. Um, once this one gets above six, you could, you could pretty much see a rip. And now we're in the 690s approaching that $7. All right, I think we're gonna maybe get one more test down to the 76 for DKNG, and then we should get a lift. Um, we'll see if it gets a lift right here. If it does, I'll look at Penn. Yep, looks like it's coming back a little bit there. Let's see what happens here. I have a feeling this NKLA is going to crack hard today. Looking for a push back to 67, 70s here for NKLA. Sorry guys, uh, just uh, honestly, I just, I was honest with the Thinkorswim guy real quick and was just like, yo, look man, like I've got 25,000 followers here. They all saw it, 400 people saw it live. And so I have it on video. It's not something I'm gonna continue arguing about the semantics behind it. You know, if you can't fix it, that's fine. I'm just gonna switch platforms and stop promoting Thinkorswim. Um, and you know, I appreciate your help anyway, is all I told him, you know, it is what it is, whatever. Well, can't blame me for it. Use that leverage, bro. Yeah, hey, I was just being honest with him. Like, look, dude, like, I got 25,000 people on my, on my channel. I got, I had 400 people watching it as it happened. Like, if you want to pull that route and deny it and say, oh, everything looks good on my end, that's cool, bro, but it's going to make y'all look worse. And ultimately, it's no sweat. Like, I can switch platforms. It's not a big deal, you know? Exactly. Um, now there's tons of you guys. Right. So. You know. Please don't text and drive. Hey, don't text and drive, bro. 
What about test line drive? <laughs> the test line sleep kind of method? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just need to get a Tesla and be an Uber and just sleep the whole time. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I'm going to go back and watch this happen, guys. So I'm going to be back. I, I'll be right back. I'm going to rewind the stream. So hold it down, Mitch. I'll be back. You, I got you up right now, brother. Uh, but I'll be no back. No worries, guys. Me. I'm looking at the Nikola. Nikola. I actually think this one's going to drop a little bit today. Um, just feel like I got a little extended yesterday. Um, think if it can get up here to the 67, 70s, we can risk off the 68 or a little bit above 68. So I'm going to put like 100 shares if I can get an entry there. And I think it could sweep right back down to 66, which would be interesting move there. I'm going to put an order out here as it pushes up. So you guys see me putting this order out way early in time. Um, the real key is uh, if I wanted to, I wanted to pop to that level, fill me and immediately come right back down seen pen crack there um, so be careful with DKNG here breaking down also uh, it seems like the markets is weak right now guys all right let me catch up with uh, the chat and also let me tell you guys what's moving what's on the upside what's on the downside all right the the worst sector today, financial services, guys. So maybe look for stocks like Citigroup, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, um, Wells Fargo, uh, stocks like that getting hit hard. Here, dropping down there, guys. Uh, heading down there guys dick's super strong today guys Yeah, mine's recorded supercharged, but good luck trying to get them to actually do it. Mine, I have it on video, uh, exactly what I said happened, happened. Uh, I put in an order, canceled it, put in an order, canceled it. it. It implemented the orders immediately. I tried to cancel them, it wouldn't exit out. I would try to click cancel and it literally would not cancel the order. And then when after all the orders were canceled, it immediately filled them all. It, it filled all four orders right at once uh, with a thousand shares, you know. What's going on, guys? What's going on, traders? How we doing out there? There's a little dip there. A little dip in DKNG. A little dip in the SPY. I'm looking for a pop-up to get into NKLA. Here, going straight down, guys. There's going to be some stocks cracking here, I feel. Especially if the spy breaks this low, 312. Stocks have pretty much flipped, guys. Remember in the morning I said about 80 or 90% of my watch list was green. Now about 60% of it is in the red. Minus 30, 20 is actually what it was.
Yeah, I never, uh, I personally, um, I, I remember when I used to use the, the paper trading in Thinkorswim, and that used to get me, I think, get mad lags. enough. Yeah. Mad <laughs> enough uh, to not use them. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what actually, I think, turned me away from them, John, was that, that feature. See, I love it. was their, just so slow. I love their platform, though. Like, their platform is, like, my favorite platform ever. I've been using them for years and years. Uh, and so it's just unfortunate, man. I'm going to... I'm, I'm trading a little bit of MU. Like, I love their platform. Like, Thinkorswim is, like, the, the best platform, in my opinion. It's my favorite one, for sure. And so it's just unfortunate that... Uh, that it just lags like it does, man. Because um, I really like the platform, honestly. I'm going to I'm gonna get out here. I just made... Uh, about $44 on AMD on scalping the upside. I'm just going to move on with my trading team. That's all I can really do. Um, and like I said, maybe I'll give them another chance, but I, I genuinely think that if E-Trade has free commissions, I'm just going to switch to E-Trade. Because uh, like not only did it lose me a hundred bucks or two hundred dollars basically but it also used all my equity in my account so i'm not able to trade really anymore okay um so one thing that i i want to talk about it's a question that sid uh asked in the in the chat um he said uh technical question sometimes time in sales shows a lot of huge selling bigger than the buying prints but the price keeps going up why is that okay so what we need to come to an understanding is is to bid and ask prices what is a definition of a bid and ask price does that mean sellers and buyers or does that mean the offer and the bid and i think this is what uh is commonly uh confused in the trading world so put it in the chat if you guys think you know the answer um, and that, that way I can touch it because I, I have a feeling a lot of us would get it wrong. Yeah, PT eventually ripped up to 170s too. If I was holding a smaller share size, I would have probably held on to it a little bit longer. But since I'm holding a thousand shares, I can't take, you know, any any more risk than that. It was just too much. I guess I could have scaled out, but yeah, it's just there's nothing I could do. Like I said, luckily I got it on video. I I don't know if they're gonna actually listen to me or not. I tried to talk to him. The dude basically just stopped responding, which you know is unfortunate, but it is what it is. You know, we'll uh, the platforms. NKLA just never feeling me there already starting to turn away so i'm just going to cancel the order for now um, i definitely think this one could crack though um, so let me tell you guys a little bit about that so bid and ask price all right um, so the bid price refers to the highest price a buyer will pay for a security the ask price is the lowest price a seller will accept for a security so one of the things that you got to understand is that you don't necessarily need to throw up your price on the ask, right? You can throw up your price on the bid, right? This is just doesn't mean that you're not going to get filled uh, immediately. And so one of the things to understand is that this is all a price and uh, this is all a price demand game. So you have to understand that there's a certain amount of supply and a certain amount of demand. And this is why some traders, they use deep level two knowledge and kind of uh, even kind of like what you see on the active trader for Thinkorswim, where you see where the majority of the volume is uh, being traded at. I think that's an important uh, feature that Thinkorswim even has in it. Um, but uh, this is a little bit more advanced if you're trying to understand level two and time in sales because the reason it's in more advanced is that there's a lot of what we call hidden orders or orders that go through dark route uh, dark pool routing and this actually is hidden from retail traders you have to pay to get this this data and so this is where i start telling you that like if you're going to strictly trade off the level two and the time in sales then you need to go ahead and pay for that data 
And I can tell you right now, I've looked into it. It's expensive. So um, if you're going to purely trade off of that and you can make uh, a lot of money, then yeah, maybe you can pay for that dark pool data. Um, but you need to understand dark pooling. You need to understand what I call the full market debt. Hey guys, I'm in FRSX up. right now. I'm just giving you guys a head up. I'm in with 450 shares. Uh, Justine, uh, the other guy uh, who you're hearing right now, that's Mitch. And then uh, John is, is the leader, and that's who you see on the screen. So yeah, I'm in with uh, about 500 shares, a little bit less than 500 shares. I'm ultimately looking to see if this one can start to pop up. I want to catch 150 uh, as my reward target here with the uh, FRSX. And KLA breaking down already. Looks like a good fade on that one, man. KNG still holding, guys. Trying to see what's going to go on with the spy. See if we get a reversal of just big green here. I like this bottom and pen. If I can get 75s here, I can risk down to about 61s. All right, catching up with the chat here. I got you guys. Uh, Mitch, thoughts on BYFC. All right, I'll check it out. Just give me a second here. Interesting. Uh, that one did a, what I would call a five minute uh, VWAP bounce. Um, made a second drive. Uh, look for a pullback, uh, pullback to come back closer towards that 470 area. And, and then I would look to see if it gets some volume at the 90 MA, um, which is around the 490s, to see if there's some uh, kind of bag buyers trying to do another VWAP bounce up to six. I'm also in, a, I'm in a AMD with a 400 shares here. Gonna catch a breakdown after it broke under that big low. There you go, Preston. Good job. Congratulations on your first trade. Or first $300 trade, whichever one it was. Uh, definitely, if that was your goal and you hit it, go ahead and go enjoy your day. Go enjoy the weekend. Understand that at the end of the day, uh, my man Conor McGregor says it the best. You know, we're not here to take part. We're here to take over. Yeah. That's something gonna... that I think uh, traders forget. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're good. Uh, probably going to get out here pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to let it test the VWAP level here for FRSX, but uh, it's starting to break low, so I'm probably going to exit soon if it breaks under this. Holding uh, also AMD short. Uh, see if we can break down under that level too. All right, guys, just took a little bit here in pen. I'm looking to add in here. I'm not really seeing much today, guys. So this might be my last trade. And just because when I don't see the patterns working, and the only one I've been seeing is GAN, and I haven't traded it. Uh, DKNG seemed interesting, but it didn't rip out completely. And uh, I need to just stay focused here. And if it's not gonna be here today, then I'll just get out of here and can go enjoy the, the, the day. 
go find some new uh, some new penny plays for next week. I took half off of this AMD trade, um, holding 200 shares left. Gonna let this work down, hopefully under the 80s. Here goes FRSX, uh, starting to rebound here. I got a really obvious risk level now at 129, fortunately. All right, I think we'll see one last dip here in pen, and I'll try to uh, improve my average here. popped a little bit I'm just gonna get out the rest there got out pretty close to break even on the last little bit up a little bit on the day for AMD but nothing incredible so far you said you're in something Mitch no I'm just hanging out yeah there goes PT Oh, pen. I'm holding pen. Oh. I got lost there. <laughs> Looking at too many stocks over here. I'm trying to see the market. Today is one of those days where I just feel like it's so wishy-washy. Big dip there. Big dip there and, and pen. If it breaks these 60s, that's really my risk here. So it needs a bounce right here. I'm about break even in FRSX, it ripped up like I wanted it to. Not a bad little view out bounce there, but we're finally moving back up. So uh, I'm gonna get prepared to uh, take some profits if we get a high of the day break on this one. market today it's a hard one i can tell you that Not, nothing at least my patterns are working I'm trying to see if we just get a quick reversal but it's not happening there's no buyers stepping up another day in the, in the market where I'm going to be paying attention to that pattern. I got to stop uh, not paying attention to that pattern. If it's pre-market straight up, I'm going to be looking down. If it's pre-market straight down, I'm going to be looking up. All right, I'm in AMD just with seems to be working. Go ahead. Uh, I'm in AMD with 500 shoes just now on this low break. All right, guys, uh, got out there. Um, got to know when to fold them. And today, it's just not working. It could come back in the afternoon, or I could just end up keep losing. And that's not what I'm gonna do, guys. Um, I'm gonna cut it here. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll check out some charts for you guys, but I'm not gonna take another trade on the day. I've been doing too well on the week to give away profits. So uh, if the SPY comes back and rips through 313.50, that would change my view from bearish to bullish. Um, but I can tell you right now, um, it's been a tough day. So uh, we might get this 1030 reversal, the, the famous 1030 reversal, but I'm probably done for the day, at least trading wise. I'm gonna get out of AMD, just a quick bounce there. Um, small day so far for me too, nothing too crazy. Waiting to see if this FRSX trade can rip up and break these highs, but putting in a lower high right now, not really the best sign, to be honest. I don't mind the five minute though. Five minute looks kind of strong, but. I 
Yeah, I was short in uh, AMD. I am long in FRSX. All right, team, as we see this market a little choppy today, um, definitely a harder day today, uh, but had a great week, uh, over 500 on the week. Um, hey guys, I'm, I'm gonna be really trying to put in some money into Webull to start trying to do some more uh, kind of penny stock trades um, on the stream and also uh, take some more kind of investment outlooks, uh, whether that be building a portfolio of these of these pennies or kind of doing whatever I can that gives me the advantage into whatever broker platform I'm going to. Um, so I'm going to be checking out Webull. Um, the real key thing with Webull is they pay zero in commissions to trade stocks, ETFs, and options. Uh, you can pay zero for option contract fees, no minimum deposit requirement to open your brokerage account. Um, but if you use a, a minimum of $100, I think they give you a free stock, a pretty good free stock. So uh, access to market analysis, advanced trading tools, in-depth charts. Um, their charts are really not that bad. They have a lot of indicators that you can add to it. And they have a web-based uh, platform uh, also. Uh, you can use uh, the stock screeners to locate the stocks that you want to trade quickly. Um, another good thing about Webull is they have kind of like uh, reports on certain stocks, kind of like you see the news, um, you get uh, access to uh, complimentary real-time data. You don't have to pay for the real data. I think that's important also. Um, you get also a free paper trading feature. If you guys need a, a paper trading platform, a Webull will go ahead and offer that for you for free. So definitely check them out. It has over 44 technical indicators and 12 charting tools. So I think it's gonna be pretty advanced. I need to get used to it this weekend. So I'm gonna open it up and get, get kind of the feel for it. And I'll let you guys know on Monday how I'm doing. Yeah, I jumped in AMD short. I saw the market breaking lows. I figured it's gonna drag AMD out, down quickly. I'm in with a thousand shares, um, break even so far. We're gonna to try to get down to 75 maybe. So many sevens. Alright, I took half off there, holding 500 shoes. Uh, see if we get the much larger breakdown here. Yeah, there's the breakdown with the market. Gonna take another half off there, holding 200 shoes left. Uh, see if we can catch this breakdown here as the market breaks lows. Hopefully, it can hold underneath that level. Restaurants getting hit today hard. All right, so we're breaking down to 69s. I'm gonna take half off here. Hold this last little hundred shares. Hopefully down to like 54.50, and I can be a little bit more patient with that. Maybe add to it on bounce backs or something like that. But BA fading all day, guys, all day. Ooh, Tesla looks interesting, John. I know you don't like the trader, but that's a beautiful fade there. Yeah, too crazy of a range for me, unfortunately, with Tesla. It's a little tighter today. Normally, it isn't this tight. I don't. 
normally I see Tesla moving like $10. It's only moving like three today. Not, not the worst. Yeah. I just added a little bit to my AMD trade. Um, that Nikola breakdown. Uh, it's kind of getting near that view up. All right, traders, definitely keep up with us, guys. Uh, one thing that I want to do is I, I come up with a lot of these stocks and a lot of the times um, I have to work hard on these edits. So they take like a, maybe a day later to really come out. I mean, one of the biggest things that I want to do is I want to be able to get you guys the stocks a little bit earlier, especially uh, you guys that stick around with us every single day and are members of the channel. Um, so I'm going to be trying to do kind of like maybe a little video or even a watch list for you guys um, so you guys can keep up up to date with these stocks. Of course, you guys are going to get these stocks for free. Um, we're never going to give you uh, kind of a limited uh, watch list only for the members because that's not what we're about really. Um, but we're, we're more along trying to do here is get more people to support the channel, become members and also give you access to it first. Um, everyone will get access to it. The video will come out. Everyone will have these stocks. But the real key is if you want to keep up with it every single day, then I, I would suggest go ahead, hit that join, become a member, guys. Right. So, yeah, basically, uh, he's going to start dropping a watch list for just the members a little bit early. The, eventually, the watch list will come out later for everybody else. But if you're a member, you are going to get like a weekly watch list video for Mitch uh, where we drop the watch list uh, that Mitch is for all the stocks that Mitch is looking at for the week um, and so to all the members you're gonna get that a little bit early uh, and uh, even like I said even if uh, you're uh, not a member yeah, I gotta get out got squeezed out of AMD uh, but yeah even if you're not a member uh, you're still gonna get the watch list it's just gonna be a little bit later yeah it's a one way of us trying to give you guys something that our members are ready and for new members that are coming in um, i really want to find some way of giving you guys giving it back to you guys giving you some value um, but also like always guys we're going to keep everything free you will get the information just they might get it a day earlier or a day a day or two early right so yeah, if you're a member, like I said, if you want to become a member, you can click the join button next to the subscribe button and become a member to our channel here, team. Um, like I said, we day trade live on stream every single day right here on YouTube. And so remember to subscribe as well, guys. We day trade live on stream for free every single day. And so if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Hey, I appreciate the sub, Chris. Welcome in. Um, and yeah, uh, to join Pablo, you click the join button next to the subscribe button. I'm in with a thousand shares of AMD. I'm going to start trying to scalp this move under as it drops, hoping that we get a rejection uh, at that level on the spy, which should drag this one down. But a thousand shares, um, we'll see if uh, we get that move down like we need to. Yeah, but I think my PL is kind of showing the choppy day. I've been up and down and up and down, just small overall. tough day today for sure yeah just it's been a tough few days like the last few days have been choppy too yeah chop fest is hard to trade guys um one thing that i'll tell you guys in days like this if you do find a stock that you're trading well this is probably the best day to stick with that stock right. um and, and i think that's one thing that we can i always try to pull something out from the day guys um, let's pull that out of the day is that on days like this where you're gonna feel you're, you're feeling like every stock around you is chopping up a little bit find the stock that isn't find the stock that you feel is trending or a stock that you made a win on and kind of stick to that stock because that means that you could be seeing it well it could be moving with a good pattern and it could have the investors trending in one direction so I think this is the biggest important thing is that sometimes stocks don't go with the market. 
and that could be th that could be this stock that you're looking at hey appreciate the sub just d'angelo welcome Hey, welcome, Just D'Angelo. Yeah, for sure. That that watch list is gonna start dropping. We'll, we'll probably what what day you want to start putting it out, Mitch? On Sundays. Coming a member, just D'Angelo. Uh, welcome. All right, guys. Uh, starting to feel the pressure a little bit here to take a trade. So this is what I do, guys. If I feel the pressure to take a trade, and I didn't want to take a trade, I'm gonna really quickly go to my test. I'm gonna close it down. I don't mind leaving a chart up, but now I don't have a, a platform to trade on. Now I can watch the trades. It's okay to watch, but I think sometimes when you watch and you have your broker open, that leads you to trading. Um, so uh, one of the things is I don't want to give up my great profits on the week. Um, I already closed down the week in my eyes. So from that point on, I can look at stocks, but I don't want to have an option to trade. So I, sh I close down my broker and pay attention to the stocks and pay attention to some patterns. All right, so scaling out of AMD, got the breakdown I wanted. Uh, next step, I'm holding 200 shares left. Next step is uh, the 5450 level. All right, traders, definitely stay up with us on the weekend. Also, add the Discord. We talk uh, often on there, and you could also reach out to me directly um, on that Discord. So I'll, I'll see you guys later. Uh, John will be here trading till late, um, and uh, I'll go ahead and I'll get out of here. Not a bad week for me. Great wins, WKHS. Great wins uh, on uh, here. Um, also, penny stocks going crazy, guys. Uh, CLDX, DBAX. AESE, um, good call out for GAN, work. Uh, gonna continue working hard for you guys. Uh, and I'll definitely appreciate when you guys join the family, like we're seeing right now, just Angelo and, and Annette. I appreciate you guys joining the family and we'll continue working. I'll continue doing the hard work for you guys and I'll see you guys on Monday. Later, brother. Yeah, welcome, uh, Annette. Appreciate the sub. Welcome to the team. We got a little bounce back in AMD. I'm gonna get in with 400 shares. Ideally looking for this 55 level and the rest. Smaller share size than before though, since I'm uh, trying to uh, kind of build on the gain so far. SHLL, I got you, Todd, hold on. It's going crazy. I wonder if I can trade that. Yeah, that one is tradable. It's such a huge range, though. This one never got back to me. Uh, the dude just kind of left me there.
right, I just shorted into this one for AMD. I'm in with a thousand shares. The reason I shorted into is I'm anticipating we get a rejection at 70. Hopefully, uh, we get a rejection at 73, and if not, I can just jump out. But I'm trying to kind of catch the uh, rejection that we get here. Hey, appreciate the uh, becoming a member, Jorge. Welcome, brother. Appreciate that. Welcome to the team, dude. Um, yeah, that, that watch list for Mitch should start dropping on Sunday, I believe. So on Sunday, the watch list should come out. All right, like I said, I'm in 1,000 shares of AMD. We're just trying to see if it gets rejected at this resistance. And uh, hopefully we get a move back down. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use profit that I have to, to kind of build up more profit. But we, what we do is we need a AMD to actually follow these resistance levels. And I'll give it time. I mean, we have uh, plenty of profit on the day, so we'll be okay. But ideally, I'd like to see it down to like 60. And we'll give it a little bit more time to handle that. The market's dropping, which is uh, I think should help with AMD. Market's coming down. So like I said, I'm in this one anticipating that we get a rejection right here at 73, which is kind of looks like we're doing. Uh, we get a move down to the 60 level. I'll take some off here. starts to break lows and then rebounds quickly here 65s out of coffee nah, I don't like the squeeze um, we're following the market and the market's bouncing back up unfortunately I'll give it a second to see if the market rejects here, hopefully, but... Alright, that's better. Market gave back some of the gaps that we're dropping, but... Like I said, in order to take profits here, we need like 40... 54, 60s, maybe. At the very least, you can see here, we did actually get the rejection at the uh, 70 level that I talked about. We just need a little bit more to justify taking profit, I think. There's 63s, 62s will get out a little bit, but we need 62s. Get out here just a little bit. Got out with 500 shares. Uh, gonna hold a little bit more. Hey, I appreciate the sub. That's just a way to protect the risk. Appreciate the sub, Nate. Welcome, man. Appreciate it. Welcome, brother. Hey, see you, JP. Later, bro. But yeah, taking a little bit off there, it might seem counterproductive, uh, but it's going to allow me to be much more patient here because we're just kind of rangy right now. Like if you look at this range, this is the range we're in. And it's a really easy range because if it breaks the top of this, I can get out and if it holds, I can just stay in it. But uh, ideally we need to uh, continue moving here. Get 
out here. Like I said, breaks over that range. I just gotta get out. And right now, we're really just chopping with the market, just to put it into perspective. Like, the market's bouncing up, I think our SWAM's bouncing, or, or AMD's bouncing up, and then if the market drops, then AMD's ultimately gonna drop with it. And so really what we need here is we need the market to drop down. Um, I've already taken profit, so I'm allowed to be a little bit more uh, patient with it. But uh, ideally, we'd like to see a much larger breakdown under 5460 if we can. We got down to 61 for a second, but we need the full-on break here. Yeah, market wick back down. We're going to get a big drop here. There it is. I'm going to get out another half here. Going to hold these 200 shears. See if we get a nice firm breakdown underneath here that we don't bounce from. You can see every time we come down here, we get this big wick. Same thing happened right here. So that just means some buying pressure, right? And so we need this to actually hold underneath this level here. Break down out of that range. I've already taken profits. It's not going to be a losing trade. But um, ideally, we need to, the buying pressure to stop down here. And we need the shorts to come in, the sellers to come in. And uh, I could probably get out break even now if I wanted to. Again, we're really just going with the market right now. That's all we're doing. All right, 60s. I'm going to take the rest off at 50 if we can. need to hold see every time it comes down here you see the buying pressure that moves in you see these up wick or these down wicks these down wicks mean buying pressure right when you see a lot a big down wick on the bottom here it means pressure going up um, and, and vice versa if you see a big wick on the top it means pressure going down uh, and so with that we just need this pressure to stop and we need it to actually hold underneath this 5460 level you can see every time it happens it rebounds back up look at all that buying pressure um, and so with that we just need it to actually hold for once uh, this is really based off of what the, the spy itself is doing and uh, like i said i'm gonna get out here break even on the rest um, but if we look at the spot uh, that's exactly what we're getting like you can see these down wicks right here same thing a lot of buying pressure look at these wicks on the bottom here that just means we're getting some pressure on the down so on the upside when we get down there so uh, i don't mind jumping back into this if we actually firmly break uh, these levels here at 57 but uh not super confident in that and we're just gonna have to patiently wait and see $83 small, but uh, I, I don't mind it. Market's just mostly choppy today. There's nothing too, too crazy. Hey, thank you, man. What's up, Todd? What's up, dude?
Disney breaks under the whole dollar of 19. I'm shorting into it. Alright, I'm in Disney with 200 shares here. Uh, shorting underneath the whole dollar down under 19. Hopefully we get a drag down, but... 200 shares of Disney. Um, I just want to see it follow through down to like 1875 or so. It's battling 19. We want to see the break underneath it with the market itself here. There's 94s. Nothing to take profits yet. Like I said, down to like 80. I'll take some off. Spy ripping down. Should be good. Like I said, we need a little bit more, but small shot. If the market fully breaks down here, we should get a drag down, but... Just to show you guys, I'm just trying to catch under the whole dollar here. You can see all that resistance. Let me draw it out. Look at all that resistance there. Hopefully that level holds us... Uh, Resistance now at 119. Market ripping down, that should be good for me here. I don't mind adding another 100 shares if it bounces up to the whole dollar of 19 again. Hey, I appreciate the sub. Uh, shout out to Sean. Welcome, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, like I said, guys, we do this live for free. Y'all be like Sean, hit the subscribe button. We do this live for free every day right here on YouTube. Uh, so show support for what we do here, team. We're just a free resource and community for traders. Uh, we're not experts. Um, we are not gurus. We just teach people what works for us. It might not work for you. But uh, if you appreciate free trading content, uh, hit that subscribe button. We do this live every day on YouTube. And there's 88. I wish I would have gotten that ad in there, but it's okay. Um, 87s. Maybe I'm being a little bit too strict with my profit target, but I, I like this move. We just need the market to head down with it and not bounce anymore. All right, I'm going to short into that bounce. Like I said, I'm in with 300 shares now. I'm going to take half off there. That's the bounce I wanted. I hope you guys caught that short right into this bounce. Uh, anticipating that half dollar rejection um, I'm gonna get out there uh, so I'm up 105 on the day scalping Disney at that break um, we're still kind of trading some so we'll, we'll see what else we can find I'm just trying to trade off of the market volatility uh, they basically told me it, uh, that it didn't happen Mateo Thinkorswim basically told me, nah, we filled you immediately, it's fine. That's basically what they said. You know, and I'm like, hey, I'm like, hey, Thinkorswim, I got it on video. I'm like, I got it on video. And then I told him, I was like, look, like, I run a YouTube channel with 25,000 subscribers. I was like, I had 400 people watching me as this happened. You know, I'm not making this up. Uh, this actually happened, and they never, they basically never responded back to me. Um, I mean, it is, like, it is what it is. to the whole dollar here for Disney. I might scalp into another 200 shares of this. But I'm in with 200 shares here. Um, just trying to scalp Disney's rejection, hopefully at this whole dollar. Just to, It really depends on what the market does right here, though. The market's going to influence this.
$19 risk level. I let it test. It can go to like 1901 or 1902. And then I'm gonna just jump out of this. Uh, see if the spy is gonna reject, which it kind of looks like it is. Yeah, I hope you guys can see this is the resistance level I'm letting it bounce into. I'm just hoping this rejects with the market, but. but we're letting it battle here. Market moving up. That's probably bad for this position. I'll probably see a spike up in Disney right now as the market bounces up fast here. I'll let it battle that 312.50 right here. And uh, that's it. Spy's heading up to 312.50. Spy breaks 312.50. Uh, I'm going to get out of Disney here. Fives. So we do have some confirmation there now, it's better. Right, there's the 80s again. Right, so we did get the rejection at 119, like I called out. Um, we're about break even now, we just want to see. Uh, 1882, 1883, right here. This is what I'm talking about. This level right here this is what we want to see break if we can. Spy back up. There's 91s, 89s. All right, so yeah, like I said, we would need 82, 83 before we jump out anymore. get out half here and then see if we get the breakdown under 70s this is the move I talked about uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit longer see if we get the full breakdown this the asking price is still at 79 there's 78 um, I'm just gonna get out there so I am up 127 on the day just trading a few hundred shares of Disney um, but that's the breakdown I wanted called out exactly what I wanted to happen luckily we got it there uh, Yeah, I'll call them. I appreciate that S money. Uh... Alright, so this is my PL on the day. Not a bad day. I think I'm gonna hang it up, guys. I don't think I'm gonna trade anymore. I think I'm just gonna end the green, end the week on a green note and just finish the day. Uh, like I said, my account's up about uh, eight thousand seven hundred sixty-eight dollars. Uh, That's a pretty serious amount of profit uh, in my account. I think I've pulled back a little bit in the last few weeks, but uh, still uh, acceptable for sure. Um, I should be dropping a few videos this weekend. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on how to get around the PDT rule on brokers like Thinkorswim, ironically enough. Uh, I'll post this link um, one more time to our my video from this weekend, or my video from yesterday. I did drop a video on how you specifically get around the PDT rule. And so, if you want to check out that video, uh, there's the link. Nah, I don't I don't trade uh, offerings at all. Uh, go to that link if you want to figure out how to day trade penny stocks uh, with no PDT rule. Um, Again, if you want to use uh, 
if you want to use a the same platform that Mitch and I are using. You can use Teps and TradeNet. This is the same package I am. Only if you're outside of the US will you get access to our platform and our funded account program. Uh, if you're in the US, it comes with like a course and a demo account and chat room access, uh, but you're not gonna get the funded account if you're in the US. But if you're outside of the US, it's a pretty cheap platform that allows you to actively day trade with no PDT rule. And so basically, if you're outside the US, you pay for a package. It's an educational package. It comes with a course and a demo account and access to their chat room. And then once you're approved for the funded account program, basically, as long as you haven't signed up too much already, uh, once you're approved, the $400 package gets you 4, 000, or 14,000 in buying power to trade with, with no PDT rule, shorting ability, and a lot of other cool stuff. Um, it's mostly mid and high caps. You're not going to be able to trade penny stocks. Uh, and so uh, there's the link if you want to check that out. Like I said, it operates like a prop firm, but I think it's the cheapest way. Instead of a new trader having to risk thousands of dollars, you could spend 400 bucks only if you're outside the U.S. Only if you're outside the U.S. you could spend 400 bucks and get access to their funded account program. Uh, luckily, I was grandfathered in even though uh, I am in the US, if you had an account before, but they stopped accepting US clients, unfortunately, but you can check that out if you want to. Um, this one's called Rain Check by Dylan Sitz Economy. Um, now, if you're in the United States, if you are in the US, you can go check out Webull, and with Webull, you get a free stock just for signing up. You get a free stock. If you deposit $100, you get another free stock. And so if you wanna go check out Webull, uh, there's the link. Like I said, that's the platform I'm using with Thinkorswim and Weeble uh, as well. And uh, yeah, if you want to sign up through my link and help support our channel, both of these are good ways. We make a commission if you sign up through both of these. Um, and so again, if you want to use Weeble, you can. Much better platform than Robinhood. Uh, legit charting software. You get a free stock for signing up. There's a lot of cool stuff with Weeble. And so if you want to check out Weeble, again, just for signing up and depositing $100, I think you get two free stocks. Uh, ranging from I don't know like 15 to 20 bucks all the way up to like uh, I don't know much higher 1500 bucks I think uh, and so you know y'all go sign up deposit 100 bucks into Weeble there's the link for that in the chat we should be dropping a few good videos this weekend guys so be on the lookout for those as well uh, I'm gonna call Thinkorswim and see if they can refund me my hundred and seventy dollars that I lost in the trade luckily I have it on video but like I said I've talked to them earlier and they basically told me um, that what I said happened didn't happen. Um, so we'll see. I'll call him. So I'm, I'm trying to read like, it's just unfortunate that Thinkorswim is going to be like, no, it didn't happen. Um, yeah, so if you want to check out the website, we do have our website at beginnertrading.net. Uh, you can go check out this site. Um, there's the link if you want to go check it out. There's our website. Uh, Y'all go check out my man Trader Mike's Discord as well. Super active penny stock Discord. Uh, probably the most active penny stock Discord I've ever been in. And so y'all go check out his Discord. I'll post that link here as well. Here's the link for that. And again, guys, if you didn't catch the news earlier, uh, if you didn't catch the news earlier, uh, Mitch is going to be dropping a watch list video, I think every Sunday for our members. Uh, the rest of the chat's gonna get the, the watch list as well, but if you're a member, you'll get the watch list, Mitch's watch list, a little bit early. Uh, to become a member, it's, I think, $4.99 a month. You can click the join button next to the subscribe button and become a member and uh you guys know us like we're just a free resource and community and you will all eventually get the watch list but if you want to get it a little bit early uh become a member and uh, you can click the join button next to the subscribe button to do so uh, so i hope that makes sense yeah yeah for sure s money yeah and like i said i have it all on video i can send them the stream link uh hopefully they they listen to me but yeah with that said guys i'm gonna get out of here it's a green day it's been a tough week for me um like you can see there my account's up about eight thousand six hundred or eight thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars after today so i'm up uh, almost nine grand still in my account so not a bad day um but yeah we'll see what happens um but yeah guys i'll see you guys next time have a good day we'll, we'll have two videos out this weekend 
Uh, good luck in the markets team, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good day, guys.